These bell peppers were grown side by side in totes indoors using two hydroponic methods. One used DWC or the deep water culture method. The other used the Kratky or non-circulating hydroponic method. Can you tell which is which? Hi everyone, welcome to this video where you will see a side-by-side -side comparison of two hydroponic growing methods, one with an air pump and one without an air pump. Here is the mother of both plants, an orange bell pepper I got from the supermarket. No, it was not labeled organic, but it was perfectly shaped and I wanted to see if I could get offspring that looked like their mother. And I did. Well, almost. Here is some of the harvest of the hydroponic bell peppers. Can you tell which is Kratky and which is DWC? If you're not familiar with hydroponic growing methods, then very simply, it's a way of growing in water rather than in soil. But there are quite a few variations. Some methods use an air pump. Some use fish to fertilize the plants. The simplest method is the Kratky method, also known as the non-circulating hydroponic method. It uses a gap of air between the plants and the water to encourage the growth of air roots and to prevent the plant from drowning. With this method, you can grow plants hydroponically without electricity, provided you have enough sunlight to keep the plants happy and healthy. So to start, I cut open the mother bell pepper you can see there are a lot of seeds inside the pepper. All of them presumably have the potential to grow into mature plants. So now I need to get the seeds to germinate. Normally when I'm growing hydroponically, I drop the seeds into cubes of rock wool to germinate. The rock wool first needs to be saturated with water, and then you simply drop a seed down the hole and keep it in a moist and humid environment until the seeds sprout. But this time I wanted to try something a little different. It has no bearing on the outcome of this side-by-side -side comparison, but I wanted to see how quickly the seeds would germinate using the paper towel method compared with germinating in soil or rock wool. But that's for another video. So I dropped the seeds into a very damp paper towel, folded them up, and placed them into a plastic baggie to keep the seeds moist and humid. About 10 days later you can see that many of the seeds have sprouted, I'm going to transfer the healthier looking ones into rock wool at this point. I cut a slit into the rock wool and then move the sprouts into their new home with a piece of the paper towel still attached. I was afraid to detach the sprout from the paper towel that I might damage it in some way, so I transplanted it to the rock wool cube with the roots still embedded in the paper towel. The rock wool cube then goes into a net cup which is usually suspended above the water. But since the roots are not developed enough to get down into the water, I kept the water level high to keep the rock wool wet. This way the developing seedling would be able to have enough water to keep growing. If the water level is too low, the rock wool will dry out and the seedling will die. This is a 3 inch net cup that fits perfectly in wide mouth mason jars or empty Folgers coffee jars. By the way, this is not plain water, this is a hydroponic solution I mixed up using Fox Farms Grow Big Solution. It's very simple to mix up, just add two teaspoons to a gallon of water and done. So now I have four of the bell pepper sprouts transplanted into their new homes. At this point I wasn't sure what I was going to do, later I decided to use them for a side-by-side -side experiment. And now it's five days later and you can see the bell pepper sprouts are doing very well. Now it's two weeks later and you can see some nice growth on these seedlings. I added some hydroponic clay pebbles to the net cup. They help to stabilize the plant in the container and also block the light from shining down into the water. The light is great for the plant, but not for the water. You don't want algae growing in the water. So the clay pebbles help somewhat in blocking out the light from above, while also giving the plant a little support. And now it's another week gone by and the pepper plants are still growing. But they grow so slowly. We finally have some roots coming out from this plant and this one nothing yet. As long as the roots are not going down into the water, I'll make sure the water level stays high enough to keep the rock wool wet. Once the roots are long enough to reach the water, then I can let the water level drop. Alright, so now we are at about a month later and I've transplanted the bell pepper plants into these two totes. Here on the right I set up the tote with an air pump and two air stones. This is called the deep water culture method or DWC. You can see there's a nice healthy root system and two air stones. You can watch how I made the totes. I have a video on that. 
and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. I have the pump on the shelf above the plants where I also have some lights for the plants. These are 6500 Kelvin color temperature T5 fluorescent lights. And here on the left I have a tote set up without an air pump, Kratky style. You can see the root system is not as developed as the plants on the right. Now it's 75 days since I planted these into rock wool and you can see the plants are doing nicely. I swapped out the fluorescent lights for LED lights. This is the Mars Hydro 600 watt light that I did a review on in an earlier video. Let's have a peek at the roots. And now we are at 100 days since I planted these and here is the Kratky tote. You can see that there are flowers and also fruit. These are still green and I don't know how long it'll take to ripen or turn orange, if at all. But you can see a nice bunch of green peppers on both totes. These are the roots in the Kratky tote and here are the roots in the tote with the air pump. You can see that the roots are much larger. The question is, will that translate into larger peppers? It should. We shall see. Here is the tote with the pump. The plants have gotten way too tall, so I disconnected the pump and brought the tote over to a table to work on by pruning back some of the branches and also tying it up to give it more support. You can see I put some weights on the net cup to keep it from popping out of the tote and to keep the plant from falling over. I'm going to have to do some pruning and also give the branches some more support. The tote on the left is the Kratky tote. The one on the right is the deep water culture tote. And I think it's obvious that the one on the right has grown much larger, more branches, more leaves, and more peppers. Here you can see the peppers on the Kratky plant. And here are the peppers on the deep water culture plant. And you can see the fruits are larger on the deep water culture tote. It also has a more extensive root system than the tote on the left, which did not have an air pump. Still, if I didn't have the tote on the right for comparison, I would say the Kratky tote is doing fine in its own right. Now I'm filming from a different angle, from behind the plants, so the Kratky is now on the right and the DWC is on the left. And from this angle, I think it's clear that the DWC plants are larger, but both appear healthy and are producing fruit, although the Kratky fruit is smaller at this stage of growth. Okay, the plants are back in the grow area and you can see I did a lot of pruning. I got rid of a lot of the branches since the plants were top heavy and falling over. And one more look at the root system. This is the Kratky tote. And this is the DWC tote. And you can see the roots in the DWC tote are much more developed. Now it's 110 days since I transplanted these and the Kratky peppers are finally turning orange. They are much smaller than the DWC peppers, but those are still green for the most part. Here is one that is starting to turn. So the DWC peppers are growing larger, but are slower to ripen. The Kratky peppers grew smaller and ripened more quickly. Here you can see side by side the orange pepper on the left is smaller than the still green pepper on the right. So larger but slower to ripen for the DWC peppers and smaller but quicker to ripen for the Kratky peppers. I pruned both of these very heavily so the plants look around the same size so don't compare that. Compare the size of the fruits. You can see the size of the peppers on the right are much larger albeit slower to turn orange and the ones on the left are smaller but some are ready for harvest. None of the DWC peppers on the right are ready for harvest just yet. So now we are at day 120. I can't believe how long these peppers are taking. The DWC peppers are turning more and more orange every day, but so slowly. It could be the cooler temperature inside my house. It's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the peppers like long hot summer days. So the 70 degrees is probably fine, but on the cooler side of what they are used to. On the other hand, the Kratky peppers turned orange more quickly. And here you have a small one ready to pick. Notice how much smaller the Kratky peppers are compared with the ones grown using an air pump. Let's have a look at the roots, of course. 
and the DWC roots are much larger than the Kratky roots, but they look like they're getting old, as is the plant, which makes sense since it is almost at the end of its growing cycle. And now it is finally the end of the growing season for these pepper plants. 130 days is a long time to wait. There are varieties of pepper that grow more quickly, and I'm sure the hot summer sun would have sped up the process, but here we are, finally ready to harvest some of these. So I picked the most ripe looking peppers, and I'm sure you're wondering how they tasted. And I'm sorry to say they did not taste the same as the ones from the supermarket. The supermarket peppers are sweeter. These have a strong, unripe green pepper taste. Very strong and very disappointing. After all that time, I was hoping to get some delicious sweet bell peppers. They look pretty, but they don't taste the same. I hope you found this growing experience interesting. I will try to grow these same seeds out in the garden in the summertime and see if they are sweeter. I'll have to start the seeds early enough indoors since they need a long growing season. According to the USDA plant hardiness zone map, I am in zone 6A. The last frost date in my area is April 22nd and the first frost date is October 16th. So we have about 176 days of growing frost free. The only way to make hot weather plants happy in the summer garden is by starting the seeds early in February or March. So I better get started with that soon. The alternative is to buy the plants from a nursery, but that gets very expensive if you want to grow a lot of plants. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I look forward to your comments and suggestions. I've learned a lot from some of the comments posted here and on other growing channels as well. Thanks for watching and have fun growing. Bye!